we do apologize for this unusual time, um, but it was the only time, given summer schedules and National Guard commitments and other things, that all seven of us could be in Cape Elizabeth at the same time in the last two weeks of June. So here we are at 7 a.m. at a special meeting on Thursday, June 26th. And again, I thank those of you who took the time to come out this early in the morning. Uh, can I have a roll call? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Lynn. Present. Councillor Backer. Here. Councillor Hill. Here. Councillor Lennon. Here. Councillor McKenney. Here. Councillor Rowe. Here. Councillor Swift Kayata. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands. stands. One, One nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay, uh, the first thing on our agenda is minutes of our last three meetings. Anne? Zero opposed. I believe it should say vote on original motion. I've already discussed this with the clerk, so she's aware. Okay. Any other changes? So other than that, I would move um, acceptance of the minutes for the uh, May 12th, May 27th, and June 9th. Second. All in favor? It would be seven zero. Thank you. Is there another motion? Anne? Pardon me. Is there another motion on the minutes? I think you should cover Did you cover all three? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry then. Sorry. I haven't had my coffee. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Uh, it's a I thought we were doing them seriatim. Okay. Well, if, if, the, if the motion was to approve all three, then I do have a comment on the May 27th. Thank you, David. I did too. <laughs> um, I sorry. thought it was only on May 12th, but it's fine that it was on all three. But on May 27, um, there was uh, an executive session held at the end of the regular meeting. And there is a uh, motion uh, by Councilor McKinney to return to public session at 9.50 p.m. And then a motion to adjourn that immediately followed that. Both of those votes show seven in favor, none opposed. Should be six in favor because I did not participate and did not attend that executive session. Thank you, David. Okay. Okay, the next item is reports and correspondence. Are there any? Seeing none, we will get right to item 93, which is the school budget. And um, I think as almost everyone knows, probably, the school board um, did meet um, a week after the election and proposed a revised school department budget. It was, in fact, uh, it's probably a misnomer to say revised. The school board um, voted to send to us the 6% um, increase budget. Um, the, the town manager has proposed to have a public hearing on the budget on Monday, July 14th and um, for the town council to adopt the budget on that evening. Um, under the newly amended legislation, we would then have to hold a validation vote within 14 days. Um, and then the town manager has proposed that we hold that vote on July 22nd. So um, I'll open this item up for discussion. Cynthia and Jim. Need motion first? Sure. I would move that we um, I would move that we set the um, budget as presented by the school board that includes a six percent increase in spending for a public hearing on July fourteenth and for a budget uh, validation referendum thereafter. 
on July 22nd. 2008. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Great. Discussion? Cynthia? I just had a question about the public hearing. I, um, I didn't think that we needed to have a second public hearing, and I'm just wondering what um, the thought about that from the manager. Uh, through you. you. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, it, it, it's totally at the call of the council on whether or not there's a second public hearing. It, you, you look at the town charter and it says that uh, the proposed, it, it goes on about the initial budget submission, and then it says the proposed budget prepared by the manager, which also includes the school budget, the way this thing works, shall be reviewed by the council, which shall approve the budget with or without amendments. The complete town budget as approved by the council shall be printed and distributed, and the council shall fix the time and place for holding a public hearing on the budget and shall give a public notice of such hearing as provided in this charter. The town, the council shall then review the budget and adopt the same. You know, it, it, it's, it's unclear if that applies to, you know, it, this revised process. Uh, you know, it, you've had a public hearing, you've had a public hearing on a 4.6 percent budget. Uh, which is what the council earlier set. You know, if you feel as though you need another public hearing for the six percent budget, that's that would be up to the town council. The the, the really key date to, to me is the is you know when when the polling is set, and and meeting the either ten day limit that's in the current state law or the fourteen day limit that will be in the state law when the new state law takes effect over the next couple of weeks. The manager discussed this issue with me before um, he sent the agenda, the draft agenda out, and I think it's, it is ambiguous. Um, and I have a couple of thoughts. I guess I, where it's ambiguous, I would rather err on the side of public notice and hearing, number one. Number two, um, I think it's important for the public to understand that there is an election. And so I think that that public hearing serves also a notice um, function during the time of the summer when many of us are, you know, away on vacation or sort of checked out from the, um, the kinds of newsworthy items. So um, I, when Michael and I discussed the agenda, I thought better to err on the side of providing the public with notice and an opportunity, um, even though I admit that the 6% budget has been fairly thoroughly vetted and so I don't see a lot of benefit from the actual hearing part, although there may be, but I see a greater benefit on getting the word out to the public that, yes, there's still a process here, and we don't have a budget until we go through this process and end with an election. So just my thoughts. Anne? Um, I'll be supporting the motion, and um, just to address Cynthia's um, question. I, I don't think it's going to, it may take more of our time that evening, but it's not going to slow down the process at all since we'll be voting that night on it. So. Yeah, and I want to, pardon me, sure. I, I'm not opposed to having a public hearing. It just seems that if we're going to vote today as a town council to send a 6% budget to a referendum, then the purpose of the hearing, I guess, is for people to have an opportunity to express themselves to whom they're expressing themselves. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it, that's an issue. They're expressing themselves more to the public okay. at this point because we don't have the power of the purse strings anymore. Sarah and then David. Uh, I'd like to argue strongly on behalf of voting today for several reasons. First of all, if we follow the pattern that we did the last time, which seemed to inform people pretty well, there was a huge turnout, and we take the 10 days, not counting weekends and holidays, we have two full weeks. We wouldn't end up actually voting, depending on whether we count today as a day. I can't remember if we did. On the 10th or 11th, which is well into July. And um, so for two weeks, I think we can, in other words, I don't see how more people will be informed waiting and making it faster between our official vote and the actual Mike is shortening up the time between our vote and when the actual thing goes to the polls. In fact, I think it may be too short. Isn't it legally we have to have 10 business days for people to have absentee balloting? But anyway, that aside, it's clearly a huge benefit for the school to have this resolved sooner rather than later. 
and I see only minuscule benefits in kicking this thing down the road for another two and a half weeks before we even take a vote. Um, you know, why can't we take that blinking sign we had when it was the um, walk to school day and just put a huge blinking thing saying, you know, please vote on the school budget July 11th. Um, and I think there's a benefit to having all of us sitting right here. I don't think there's any guarantees on July 14th. I remember when we were talking about summer schedules, there was one or two people who couldn't be here. So for all of those reasons, and I, I think that I think that most people in the town are pretty aware that another vote had to take place and that was coming relatively quickly. So with all that as a background and knowing that there are several people whose contracts are literally sitting there with pig slips on top of them and they don't know what they're doing in September, you know, we've already lost one of them who got tired of waiting and left to go to Borum. I think it's highly preferable to vote today. David? I think there's some confusion swirling through this discussion, and I'm not sure whether I'm confused about the process or others are confused about the process. I just heard Councilor Lennon say, you know, we're all here today, so let's vote, rather than putting off our vote until another day. And my understanding is we're not putting off our vote on anything to another day, but all the votes are today. Is there another vote to be held after the public hearing? And if so, what is the what is that vote yes. if we are voting today to set the I'll, I'll explain that. For uh, public hearing? If, if we have a public hearing, we would have the budget vote on the, well, we have to vote on an amount to set for public hearing. So we, in a sense, have a budget vote today. But then after you have your public hearing, you vote on the amount that you set for the public referendum. Presumably, those two amounts are the same. That's one factor. The other factor is that up until July 17th, we have to use that very bad question that folks, I think, on all sides of the issue criticized. The legislature, in its wisdom, thank you, Cynthia, <laughs> amended that law. And as of July 17th or 18th, correct me if I'm wrong on the the 18th, as of the 18th, we can use a much simpler question. I emailed that question to Mike, and I had asked him to provide language. So implicit in all of this is, I think, the question of, do you want to wait until on or after the 18th to have a simpler question? Uh, and, and that law is governed by a 14-day time limit. You have to hold the election within 14 days. If we were to vote today on the penultimate question, if you will, that is what's put out to the voters, we don't get to the 18th of July with 14 days. That said, and my sense of schedules, the only other time to vote is July 14th, which is our regular July meeting in which I understood all of us would be at, but nonetheless is our regular July meeting um, that we agreed to last December. So I'm concerned about the ability to put up another date, and we can't do it today and get to the 18th. Anything we do today puts us early into that July 8th. Starts the it, 10 day clock. it starts today, and I think you have to vote on the 8th. No, but right? if you discount weekends, you vote on the 10th or 11th, no? which makes it a Thursday or Friday on another unusual day. But I'll ask Michael to speak to it and then yeah. David. I just, I'm hearing several different things and I, I want to make sure it's clear. If the council votes today to either have a public hearing on the 14th or put it off to the 14th and not have a public hearing on the 14th, that does not start the clock. What starts the clock is when the council actually votes on That's the budget. That's right. And I'm sorry if I didn't yeah. make that if, clear. If the, if the council votes between now and June 18th, the clock is 10 days. If the council votes or, or the vote is held after, excuse me, July 18th, the clock is 14 days. The, there was a lot of debate last time on how you count the dates. Uh, the council took the position of counting Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays, and indeed the new law does that. Uh, Ruthie checked with Rob Netto at Drummond Woodsum 
uh, who has been advising a lot of the clerks on this issue, he takes the opinion that you count the Saturdays and Sundays and holidays. MMA does not take that position, Maine Municipal Association. If you took Drummond Woodson's interpretation, would have to have the vote by July 3rd, uh, if, if there was a vote this morning. So it's, you know, a lot of this is, you know, we, you have different lawyers with different opinions. Uh, you have, you know, I, I, there's different options. But the real key is, is after you, you decide when you're voting and then you actually vote, it's either 10 days or 14 days, depending on, on uh, when you set the vote. And David had the floor. He asked a question, so yeah, Thank David. you. Thank you for that that explanation. Um, I don't see that there's a benefit to a public hearing. Um, I can't imagine that there is additional information and additional citizen input to be provided to us that we haven't heard already. This issue has been well vetted um, in the courier, in public hearings, in public discussion generally. and. Um, I think a public hearing, unless it's for our benefit, is not going to serve the public benefit. And to the extent that we are of a mind that we are prepared to put a 6% budget out to vote, I don't see that a public hearing is of any benefit. And in fact, I think it's taking up time that just doesn't need to be spent. Uh, my preference would be to get the public vote scheduled as soon as possible. Um, I don't see that the change in the wording of the ballot for this year for this purpose is of any significant benefit to the voters. Uh, people seem to have made their way through the budget language in the first vote, and I, my anticipation is that voting numbers will be down substantially in the second round of voting than for the first round of voting. Um, I guess I'll be surprised if there are many people who vote the second time who did not vote the first time. Uh, maybe I'll be surprised at that. As I read the ballot question, to the extent that there was confusion with it, I would, my <coughs> reading of it would have been that it might have, to the extent that it was confusing, it would have lured people to vote yes who might have otherwise been inclined to vote no. Well, it certainly didn't mislead many people if that was the case because the no votes were, were far in excess of the yes votes. Um, and my, you know, who knows what the next vote will be, but um, I'm comfortable with leaving the same language on the ballot for round number two, recognizing that I know that if we wait an additional number of days, we can get a different ballot wording, but I just don't see that to be um, a substantial issue when people have recently made their way through the ballot language and seem to have figured it out. So my inclination would be skip a public hearing um, and get the public vote scheduled uh, sooner rather than later. Sarah? Can I just ask a question? As soon as you vote, the clock starts ticking and you need to get your absentee ballots going, so you have to pretty much walk out of the meeting and print them, correct? Legally, we cannot use the new language till. 17th or I think it's the 18th, we're voting on the 14th. So either we hold the thing up for another four days or you can't change the language on the ballot halfway through when people have been absentee balancing. So I don't even get why you're saying we get to use the new language with a 14th. Actually, the law is retroactive once it becomes effective too, is it not, Cynthia? I thought there was, I mean, it's really the squirreliest thing I've ever seen, but I believe there's retroactive language, but of course the retroactive language is not effective until the law is effective. The date of the election drives the... I didn't write this. I'm just Wait, reading I have Marianne. more points. Yeah, I still have the floor. I have two more points. The second is, the, the language was confusing last time because it was opposite of what you wanted. In other words, if you wanted the hire, you had to say, no, I don't want to allocate more funds. It's now straightforward. It says, do you want to allocate more funds? The people who want to allocate more funds now vote yes, and the people who don't now vote no. So it's, so the issue of the confusing, although it's not very well worded, it's no longer completely confusing to people. So to me, that's not as great a concern. And the, my third point is, given that we 
discounted weekends last time, it seems to me to change midstream is inadvisable because all of a sudden it puts into question what we did the last time. So why don't we just count 10 days, discluding holidays and weekends, and it gets us two weeks. If just for purposes of, so we know what we're discussing, the new language says, do you favor approving the town of Cape Elizabeth school budget for the upcoming school year that was adopted at the latest school budget meeting of the town council? That's what the new question says. There's nothing about additional language. I'll ask Ruthie to make copies. I thought we were going to make I don't copies. think we get to use that language. We get to use this language if we wait till July 18th. To vote? To vote. We but get we're to talking this about language. voting on July 14th. That's right. So but we have to have another town council no, meeting? Implicit in this. No. The language we would set would be the language in effect on the, day. on the date of the vote. That's right. Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anne? Um, my concern is not so much the language. I agree the new language is clearer, but I, I also think that people were able to sort of figure out the language the first time. You know, it wasn't ideal, but they were able to figure it out the first time. So in that, um, on that point, I, I guess I'm in agreement with David. My concern is if we have sort of the and I don't know how to describe it, the final, final vote today on the budget amount, and then the clock starts running, that's going to put us um, having the election um, right around, somewhere around, depending on how we count the days, right around the 4th of July holiday. And I think the difference, I know Councillor Lennon thinks many people are very aware of this, but um, I think many people, uh, a very high number of people went to the polls on the June primary date because it was a June primary date and they were aware of it. I th and especially with us having a 7 a.m. meeting and no courier being able to come out in the, in the meantime. And, you know, I don't know how much this will be covered by the papers. I'm just afraid that, um, well, I'm persuaded by the, uh, by the uh, manager's arguments that about the, num the number of days to, uh, for staff and for citizens to make available and then find available and, uh, absentee ballots and then vote. And for that reason, um, I'm afraid if we voted today, uh, the, the major time period that people would have to be voting absentee would be during the 4th of July holiday week. And I know a lot, I mean, witness how hard it was for us to try and schedule a meeting. I know a lot of people are going away, and I think it, at least should, we should be providing the opportunity for as many people as possible to be aware and to vote. So, um, so I'm I'm in favor of the the, the schedule proposed in Cynthia's motion um, on the, the language. I, I, I'm. I shouldn't say I'm indifferent because I like the clearer language better, but I, I, that's not the argument that persuades me. It's the, the timing and the access of the public to being able to vote absentee and be aware. And I think during a holiday week is not the best time for, for that. And it's also not, there aren't that many days available for staff to be doing whatever they need to be doing. Jim? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I, too, am, am, am concerned about the notification piece. Could I ask the manager uh, approximately how much it costs, it would cost to do a, a household mailing, a single sheet household mailing? Do you have any idea? About $2,000. $2,000, thank you. Um, I'm inclined to, uh, to support the motion as, as made by Councillor Dill. David? Um, limiting my comments to the time in. Um, I agree that the concept of a, the thought of a July 3rd public vote is not attractive um, for the obvious holiday conflict reasons. Um, but I would think that the following week would be um, a reasonable time frame to hold it. And I know that we're talking about, well, but it's 10 days from today. So why don't we reschedule this meeting? And I know that we can't get seven people. We don't need seven. We only need four, right? Um, to schedule the public vote or to formally set the budget. And if all of us are here today and we're all agreed. Budget, Michael. Is it four? 
We need four. Yes. We only need four people to formally send the process off and start the clock ticking. Um, I would think that I realize that the difficulty and the reason we're here at 7 a.m. this morning is because we wanted all seven of us here, and this was the only time to do it. But if the sole purpose is, and we're agreed that we're doing it as a matter of convenience to start the clock ticking at a day other than this morning, then let's reschedule this for that purpose only and start the clock ticking next Monday rather than today <clears throat> or next Tuesday or whenever four of us can get together and it's only going to take us 15 minutes to do. Paul? I think based on the situation that we could eliminate the advisory question altogether with this next vote and I think we should vote today, I agree. I think let's get it over with. It's clear that the uh, public supported a much higher budget but um, I, don't, I don't think we need an advisory question this time. And I think that just adds to the confusion until the language gets uh, cleaned up. Also, I just want to say that um, a few things about this budget. When I joined the council three and a half years ago, uh, several councils had taken a pledge to keep spending at, CPI, at the CPI limit. And, and I listened to all the arguments, the arguments about, you know, we're a high tax burden state, we need to be efficient, and so on and so forth. And the result of those budgets, I think, was that we were designated a high performing, highly efficient school system. And I doubt, seriously, had the budget process not been what it was, that we would have been in that category. So I. I commend my colleagues that took that pledge. Now, you know that I didn't take the pledge, but I, I felt that we needed to tweak the budget a little bit each year, and we, and we did what we could. The state took some action a few years ago and adopted what's called LD1. All the voters voted for a 55% funding of schools. The state said, we can't do that right now. We'll work our way into that and they adopted LD1 to keep spending at a lower amount. I think LD1 this year is 2.5 percent, roughly. The inflation this year was about 3.9 percent. The highest school budget in this region is Scarborough, I believe, at 4.8 percent. If we adopt a budget of 6 percent, we're going to increase taxes by 6.7 percent almost 7 percent. That's not a sustainable number. If we do that year in and year out, within 10 years, we're going to double the tax rate in this town. Now, I know Mr. Hawkins lives in South Portland. I think they increased taxes by 2.4 percent or something like that this year. That's a sustainable number. Now, I'm not suggesting we're going to do that. All I'm saying that is that um, as we move forward, we need to be very careful about what we do. We cannot sustain a t tax rate of 7 percent increase each year. I'm going to support the budget today because clearly that's what people would like. But I just want people to understand, you know, the citizens to understand that this type of tax increase year in and year out is not sustainable. So what does that mean? That means we need to take more creative approaches to what we're doing. I don't have all the answers, but I, I think we need to look more carefully at cost savings. Everything that, it, all cost savings that are, are applied to the school system benefit all of us. They, they affect the tax rate. So everything that the school system can do and everything the town can do to improve savings will go to the bottom line. The spending increase isn't the issue. The tax increase is the issue in my mind. So I just wanted to share that with everyone and make sure we, we understand what we're doing here. Sarah. Sorry, I'd like to go back to the schedule, which I realize I'm obsessing about. If we use the same system we used before, we, we could vote on Friday, July 11th, which is five days after the 4th of July weekend. And although I realize that a lot of the town probably goes away for the 4th of July weekend, it would give them a full week before they went away and a full week after 
to realize there's a vote, plan to be here on the 11th, or better, vote absentee, which we can widely advertise in creative ways. We can make handmade signs and put them all up and down 77. We can put the blinking sign out saying absentee val ballots available right now. It's it's a longer time frame than people had last time when there was way more at stake, when people were way more confused and the language was much worse. So I think unless people have an overwhelmingly compelling argument that it's better to wait to longer, given that the school board and the school administration would love to move forward with planning, I think we should err on the side of doing it a little more quickly. And finally, in the unlikely and hopefully <laughs> hopefully unlikely event, that it fails and we have to vote again, all of a sudden we're, we're, we're at the end of August at, this, at the pace that we're proceeding. And I think that as counselors we have to consider that a possibility, that we may actually be doing another vote, and I think we need to allocate some time for it. So once again, I would strongly urge us to vote this thing this morning and set it out for a public vote. Michael? Hey. You know, it, it is easy to say, you know, everyone come vote absentee. But the, rea the reality is, if 2,000 people do that, with the staff we have in our office, with the close of the fiscal year, with the auditors coming the first week of July to, to begin our audit, because everyone likes fast financial statements so they know exactly where we stand, it just is not realistic to have an expectation that all that can be accomplished. It, you know, you know, th there's lots of people off July 4th week, which extends to the 11th. Uh, it is, well, it's possible to do. What you're asking for is the staff work every night during the first week of July in order to do that with trying to get the mail delivery back to people for their absentee ballots. It just is not a realistic expectation with everything else we need to do. You know, the clerk, for example, has two meetings this week of the, the cemetery trustees because people are literally waiting to figure out where their parents are going to be buried. You know, it, th there's other work going on. We don't operate in a vacuum. We did not expect when all, all these things were scheduled, the audit and other things, to, to be having a vote on July 8th or 11th. You know, running elections to me is the most important thing that we do. It ought to be done carefully. It ought to be done thoughtfully, and it ought to be done in such a way to, you know, to ensure that mistakes aren't made. You know, simply because of, you know, I'm suggesting what, from the, the original date you wanted, the 11th to the, the 23rd, it's two weeks. You know, I realize folks are waiting for notice, but I think as the council chairman has said, the school department does have other options. Uh, they've always had other options. It's, it's to me, it's, you know, it's nice to, to want something, but I think you need to look at the administrative abilities to actually accomplish what you want in a way that will be done professionally and, a, and in a way that citizens will, under, will understand the process and the word would get out. You know, the, yes, the election could be held somewhat earlier than the 22nd that I've suggested, but you know, to, to think that we can process all these absentees during the week of July 4th when a lot of folks, because of the holidays, they're going to be getting them in, the applications, like three days before the election. And then expect us to mail them out that evening. You know, you get 500 of these things in one day, it's just not that easy to do. And, and that's, you know, what we're dealing with increasingly. The last presidential election, we had more than half the voters voted absentee. And, I, I, you know, the legislators, everyone loves this. The citizens love it. But, you know, th there's a cost to it in a municipal budget that was only allowed to increase under 4% this year, as it turned out. And, you know, it, it, it seems to me we forget there's a municipal side of the town as well. And that there's workers who also are concerned about their future, they're concerned about time with their families, and they, they're concerned about all the, the things that other folks are concerned about as well. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Oh. I, I will support the motion. I think it's important to have the time to educate the public. Um, I think democracy is the most important value at stake here. Um, 
to me, the idea of having absentee votes over um, the 4th of July is um, kind of sounds almost communist to me that we'll have a secret election. Um, I think that the 11 days is not that big an issue. I have indicated to the school board, and I, and I know that Alan and the school board know this, they are within their power to move money around um, within budget lines. So they can address issues that they need to address. Um, those are compelling issues. I recognize that. But I think having an election and giving people notice, and it's easy for those of us who have school ties to say, well, we get the emails or we've contributed to CIF and we get the emails. But there are many, many people in this town who aren't on the email list. And they're going to need to be notified by newspapers, reading the courier, um, the best source of information for many people, and snail mail. And I think we should consider a mailing to all towns. Um, and lastly, I do think there's value in having a simpler question. So. Um, and I, David, I guess I'm like you. I've actually heard from a number of people who m were very confused and meant to vote a different way and read the question. So I would rather have a question that's simpler. But most importantly for me, it's just a matter of time and, um, and, and respecting democracy. So I will be supporting the motion. No, this is not a public hearing. Anne? Okay. And, and we've heard from the school board on this issue. Anne? Um, to the, uh, Excuse me, no, you're out of order. Uh, I will be supporting Cynthia's motion, which has to do with the amount, the percentage amount, and also the date. But I did want to, I'm not offering an amendment because I don't want to make things more complex, but I do want to address in a moment uh, Councillor McKenney's uh, concern about the the questions, whether there should be a second question or not. So I just wanted to let everybody know I'll be making a motion on that before we leave item number 93, after we have this vote. Okay. Are we ready for a vote on Cynthia's motion? I just have a question. Yes. Technically, how are we going to divide out people who d disagree on schedule versus disagree or not on number? Well, the, the pending two. motion is a motion. is a motion on having a public hearing on the 14th proposing to have the budget validation vote on the 14th. I'm sorry. I the, the council would then vote on the 14th, and then the public validation vote would be the 22nd. That's the current motion. And so there are basically two, two major parts to it, um, the council voting on the 14th, and then the public voting on the 22nd. If you're opposed to either one of those parts, you can oppose the motion. If you're satisfied with those, you can support the motion. And then we can go on. So we don't put the number in yet? The well, number is in. I think we have to adopt. The, the town manager is proposing to have a public hearing on the budget. I read that as the 6%. I think Cynthia mentioned specifically. Yes, I thought so. Increase. I mean, this, Thank you. There's not an, I don't think. There should be absolutely no ambiguity about my position about whether or not a 6% budget should be sent out to the public. I just happen to agree that a simpler question and um, additional time for the staff and for the public um, takes priority over having an election seven or eight days earlier. And so uh, 6% is included in the motion as the amount that is going to be the subject of the public hearing and the subject um, of ultimately final vote, at least in my view. Jim. Yeah, I did not hear the 6% and as part of the original motion, and I will vote against it based on that. Um, I, I want to thank the voters who participated at the, in the uh, June 10th election and the budget validation vote. Uh, I commend the supporters of the No Too Low initiative for the great job they did in getting out their message and the vote. Uh, I accept that my position did not prevail and that voters said on June 10th, in effect, that they wanted a greater property tax increase than 5.4%, uh, which is what a 4.6% school spending increase would entail. That was democracy in action. This, for me, has absolutely nothing to do with being pro or anti-school. I'll proudly put not only my own, but my family's uh, history of support for the young people of Cape Elizabeth and their schools next to anyone's. 
and I'd be happy to recount this in private for anyone who might be interested. My issue remains, as it has been all along, taxation. Those who believe, as I do, that a 6.6 percent mill rate increase is too high deserve continued representation on this town council, and I'm not at all embarrassed or, or abashed to provide that representation. Uh, citizen representation regarding taxation is also an important part of democracy in action, as we found out in the late 1700s. On June 10th, the voters decided by what I believe to be a narrow margin, I know there's some disagreement on that, but I believe it was a very narrow margin that they wanted a tax increase greater than 5.4 percent. The reason I say narrow margin is that we had 3,100 people who voted in that election, 1,600 plus or minus voted that it was too low. Um, that's roughly 52 percent. So I, I think, and I know there's disagreement, but I'll accept that. Voters didn't say on June 10th that they necessarily wanted a 6.6 percent tax increase, though. And I'll vote against a 6.0 percent uh, spending increase budget this morning, if, and uh, I'll also vote against it at the polls. Um, I would respectfully ask my colleagues to consider a possible compromise in taking our next step. Uh, I think it would not only uh, express sensitivity to the needs of the school advocates, but also sensitivity to those for whom taxes are a problem, and there are many of them. We've heard, heard from several of them these last couple of weeks. I think doing this might also even uh, begin the healing process in what has become a fairly contentious uh, issue. So uh, I'll change my vote because I didn't hear the 6.0 percent the first time around. Okay. Um, and before I call on you, I'd just like to point out, Jim, that you could, for the purposes of scheduling the public hearing, vote for that and then have a different vote on the 14th. I, I think I may have a solution. Okay, or Ann may have another um, solution. Yeah, if, I, if I may, it might be easier to divide the question. Sometimes, we've done this before, sometimes it's easier when you have sort of multi-issue <coughs> questions. It's easier to divide the question. And with, with Cynthia's permission, I would like to offer an amendment or a change to her um, uh, motion and to divide the amount issue from the scheduling issue. And I'd like to propose that, um, and, uh, it, that the amount, the percentage amount, just be omitted so that the motion would be something to the effect of this schedule, the, uh, the proposed schedule by the town manager. And then we can have a separate vote on the amount to set at the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Well, oh, well okay. if, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If need yes, be. I, I presume but I think Cynthia will accept Cynthia it. Cynthia, because she made the original motion, is still. Is still. I'm happy to uh, divide the question. Yeah. We, so we have to vote on the amendment first. Okay. And so there's been an amendment. There's a second. The amendment to divide the question. Yes. Okay. The, and strip out the six percent. Is that right? Is there discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a motion, a motion on the table to have a public hearing on the 14th, followed by an election on the 22nd. Thank you so much. For can she say something? She knows the schedule of the town. No, we've we've heard from them, and but she wants to weigh in on. Uh, I don't have a comment. I just thought you might want to know what the current schedule is because it has come up, and I think there might be some confusion about that. So I'm happy to share that with you. Uh, I don't think we're okay. taking any further. Might be helpful. I, I second that uh, motion that Cynthia made. Okay. All in favor? That would be one, two, three, four, five. Zero. Okay. Now we're back to the amount that will be set for public hearing. Yes. Is there a motion? I think Jim wanted to make one. Oh, Jim, would you, did you want to? Well, yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, well, based on my remarks, I would propose a compromise number be sent to the voters uh, of five point. 3% spending increase, which is halfway in between the 4.6 that got defeated and the 6.0. Again, I think this would be a, uh, a move that, would, that nobody would be happy with necessarily, but it would be a move that uh, 
most people could live with. And uh, based on that, that, that would be my motion. A second, Jim Smart. 5.3% spending increase. Thank you. Is there discussion? Uh, there was a second. Paul yeah, seconded. seconded it. So I'm waiting. Is there discussion? Well, I'd like to ask Michael what kind of tax increase a 5.3% budget, if you know, you know, would, would entail. I haven't calculated it because, you know, I, I didn't have any hint that this might come up. Uh, you know, you, you explained earlier that the tax increase is about 6.7%. It would be... So somewhere you know, it, would be it would be almost, it doesn't go exactly, but it would be uh, uh, you know, about, a, about a percentage less than that. Okay. Well, it, if it's half, it would be, yeah, it's easy enough to figure yeah. out. Right. $263,000. It's about, it's about a 6% increase, or just slightly over. David? Um, on the discussion of on the, the motion. Yes. In light of, I mean, I'm there with would easily have been a time that I would have supported Jim's motion. Uh, but that would have been before the vote no too low uh, campaign, which it seems to me was very successful um, and was premised on a 6% budget, not a 5.3% budget, not a 4.6% budget but clearly in support of the school board's 6% budget. Um, not anything less. And it wasn't just to vote no against 4.6 in search of something higher. It was vote no against 4.6 in support of the school board's 6%. I think the obligation now is to put the school board's 6% budget out to vote. It's in the hands of the voters. If they vote it down, then we can come back to 5.3 but I think at this point there's an obligation to put 6%, 6 percent, 6.0 out to vote. So I will be voting um, somewhat reluctantly um, because I'm certainly in support of the sentiment that uh, Council Rowe has expressed today and has expressed repeatedly throughout the budget process and respect that tremendously. But I'll be voting um, against the motion. And um, I have the greatest respect for my fellow Councillor Rowe, he and I... Um, Good, because I've lost all self-respect. <laughs> 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 you could take some of it that I have to do. I, um, he, he and I were the, the two councillors who voted no on the 4.6, because we thought it was too high. Um, I personally still think 6.0 is too high and I will be voting against it at the polls, if indeed it's the number that's set at the polls. However, I do think enough information went out before the, the, the last vote and that there was enough turnout at the last vote so that I think there was, it was su a sufficient mandate. I don't, I'm not sure it was a total mandate of the town. It was a mandate of the voters, but I'm, I'm also not sure what that I would call the turnout tremendous. It was under half the registered voters in town. But that's democracy. That's cool. Um, so I, I think because there was enough information on the budget presentation and the vote no too low campaign definitely positioned itself as let's support the 6% budget, vote no too low so you can in support of the 6% budget. I do think there was sufficient mandate for us to be setting a 6%, uh, setting a 6 budget for, for the citizens to vote on. So even though I am not personally in support of a 6% spending increase, I will be um, voting to send a 6% budget to the voters so they can indicate to us what they want. So, with great regret, I will not be supporting Councilor Rowe's motion. Let's vote on it. Paul. Uh, Jim, could you please explain, um, I, you had an argument of 52 to 48 percent. I'd like you to elaborate on that, if you would, Well, please. I, I, this is way off. I, yeah, I, I thought it was an interesting approach. It was a different way of looking at the vote. I'm going to respect you, Councilor, okay, I'm just who has the mic. Thank you. Gosh, um, I had put out in the press a rather a convoluted uh, personal analysis of the vote. 
Uh, but what it boils down to for me is, is what I just explained, that we had approximately 3,100 voters that voted on June 10th on this issue. Um, it, it seemed logical to me to think that anyone who voted no would also answer the, the advisory question, whether they, whether they thought it was too high or too low. Uh, we know that 1,600 plus a few uh, voted no, uh, voted too low. So I inferred, and perhaps incorrectly, but I don't think so. I think if we, if we consider that most people who voted no would also answer the advisory question, we can infer that the, those who did not vote too low voted too high. Um, so uh, given that, we have approximately 1,600 of approximately 3,100 who voted uh, too low, which is 52%. The rest, I inferred, perhaps, again, perhaps incorrectly, but I inferred that the rest either voted no too high or voted yes for the budget. Um, that, that's where I got my numbers, and, and I'll stand by that. I, I can't imagine that people would vote no and then put nothing. I think most people that voted no put why they voted no. It, it just makes sense to me. I, I mean, maybe it doesn't to other people, but it does to me. Thanks for the explanation, Jim. I, I think what you say makes a lot of sense to me, and I, I think it, it is a very logical conclusion. I'm, I'm very concerned about passing a budget that has a nearly 7% tax increase. In fact, I'm concerned about passing one that has a 6% tax increase, quite frankly. I think we're really at the outer envelope of uh, reasonableness. and. I think what Jim says makes a lot of sense. I think a compromise in between is reasonable. And even though it's a 6% increase, it's not as painful as a 7% increase. And I'm going to support Jim's motion. I, I think it makes sense. And I think it's, it's the most reasonable course of action we can take. I did some informal polling just because I wanted to understand where voters were and you know why they voted the way they did. And I asked several people um, if they understood what the implication of the budget amount was in terms of their own taxation, and they had no idea. I mean, I, I was a little bit surprised because we're so involved in this. We assume everybody knows what we know, but they didn't have any idea. I said, do you know what the tax increase is going to be if we have a 6% budget? And they said, no, I'm just in support of the schools. I said, do you know what a tax increase for 4.6% budget is? I have no idea. And I asked lots of different people from different walks of life because I wanted to have an idea about the citizenry and what they really knew about this. I think our town is extremely supportive of the school system. We all are, and we, we have been over the years. And we have a tradition of excellence here, and we want to maintain that tradition of excellence. And, and one of my baselines is that I don't want to do anything to harm the schools. I don't want the schools to have to lose their competitive position. And I, and I think a 5.3% budget will maintain the quality that the schools have built. So that's why I'm going to support it. Cynthia. Just briefly, um, I originally supported the compromise budget because I thought that it was reasonable. Um, but I also recognize completely that I was outnumbered at the polls. And there was, a, a, I think, a, a, a very credible victory as a result of a very hard-fought campaign that a lot of people participated in. And so I, you know, I also am very concerned with the tax burden, but I also um, just recognize that, uh, you know, vote no too low overwhelmingly defeated um, the 4.6 percent compromise at the polls. And so, uh, out of respect um, for all the people who participated in that campaign, I'm happy to send the 6 percent budget to the um, to the budget referendum um, process. But I, like I said earlier, I, I do think it's important to have a simpler question. And I do think it's important to give the town um, the time needed to get the word out and for the staff to adequately prepare for the election. So I won't be supporting your motion, Jim. 
I understand. Jim, I join with my colleagues in expressing my respect for you and your position. I think it's ironic that the number you've put out is a number that uh, three of the school board members felt was too high just a couple of months ago, and here we are um, talking about trying to do that. But I would just say um, ditto to what Cynthia has said. Um, I respect democracy, and um, although I think a 6% budget increase is too high, I think this is a good thing. I had calls from people this weekend asking me to vote for a lower number. And uh, it, one of them said to me, you have the power of the purse strings. And I said, no, this town council does not have the power of the purse strings over 70% of the budget. It now lies with the public. And that's not a bad thing. So um, I respect um, the public. I respect democracy. And uh, I might uh, vote against 6% in the voting booth, but I will certainly vote to put 6% out to the public. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah. I, I Jim, respectfully will vote against your motion, too. I, I don't think it's wise to infer what voters might have put. I think it's, it's prudent to look at, this, at the numbers and the facts that came out. 60% to 40%. I also think it's um, mildly disrespectful to keep talking about this as a campaign, a, get, a vote no too low campaign, that somehow it was a group that made this happen. I, I don't agree with that. I think it was the citizens of the town. Each person um, educated him or herself, made his or, own, his or her own decision, and went to vote. And there were many, many more people who told us in no uncertain terms, we want to vote on the school board budget. So it wasn't about a campaign. It was about an overwhelming majority of people who said, please let us vote on the school board budget. And I would add that it, it's also, to me, extremely significant that the school board then unanimously represented us with the 6.0 budget. So with all that as a background, I, I think that what David did was actually um, extremely impressive, which was to say before the vote even happened that whatever the vote came out, he would support. I think that that's the position we should take in the future. I agree with our chairwoman, that, that, it's, that the town now holds the purse strings. We don't. So what our personal opinions are are secondary now to what the majority of the town believes. They've made it extremely clear to us that they believe we should put the 6.0 out to vote, and so that's what I'll be voting for. Okay. And seeing no further discussion, all in favor of putting a 5.3 percent school budget increase out to the vote? 5.3. To the public. Oh, to the public. Yeah. No more that. Out to public hearing. That would be uh, two in favor, opposed? Okay, so show that to be Paul and Jim in favor. Thank you. Okay, is there another motion? Cynthia. I move that we put a 6% budget for a public hearing um, on July 14th for. Um, Assuming that that public hearing results in a vote of a majority of town councilors to also put 6% increase on the budget validation referendum question scheduled for July 22nd. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five. And opposed? Okay. Let me show that to be. Jim and Paul opposed. Okay. We need to know if you want an advisory yeah. vote on the ballot. That was, Anne's already has her hand up. So, <laughs> Anne. Um, not to prolong this, but I just uh, want to make sure that we address this issue. Uh, I do think, even, <laughs> even though it didn't necessarily come out the way everybody wanted it to come out, I do think it was very useful to have the information provided by the non-binding expression of opinion, the second question. If the citizens had voted no, I mean, they did vote no, but if they had voted no and we did not have the second question, we would at this point be in a tremendous discussion, if not wrangle, about what they meant by that. Did they mean too low? Did they mean too high? We should, we'd be having an entirely different discussion. And, um, and without any information, 
hard information, I think that uh, we would be lost and we would have had to sort of guess one way or the other whether they, uh, whether we should be put putting a different number, a higher number or a lower number out that for this next election. So I would like to make a motion that we include the second, the non-binding expression of opinion advisory question. Um, I find the school budget, quote, I find the school budget adopted at the July 14th. July 14th, thank you, Town Council school budget meeting to be, and then you can choose either too high or too low. I, so. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Cynthia? Well, I would only say um, by way of discussion that um, what's confusing, I think, is that um, if you vote to approve the budget, in this case, let's assume it's a 6% increase, um, it seems to me that the advisory question should only be answered by people who don't approve the 6% budget. Because then there's a real clear way of reading the numbers. Um, whereas if you vote to approve the 6% and say it's too high or too low, it just seems to me that's a, it's an odd procedure. I think if you vote yes to approve it, then you don't move on to question two. If you vote no, then you should move on to the advisory question of whether the reason why you voted no is because it's too high or too low. Um, Sarah? I don't have strong feelings, but I, th I do think it's um, um, extraneous. I, I think it's, uh, it's mildly confusing and unimportant because, because the town has had this lengthy conversation now and it's been clear in virtually every single person's mind, you're either talking 6% or you're talking 4.6% whether you vote no or yes, it sort of implicitly answers the second question. I don't think anybody's going to vote yes and then check that it was too high or too low. And I don't think too many people are going to vote no and check that it was too low. By definition, I mean, that it was, by definition, they thought it was too high. So I feel like the advisory question is already wrapped up in the clear language. And I, and I fear it mildly confuses people, but it's... Yeah. Well, I would respond that I've been contacted by a number of people who did like the too high, too low thing. Um, and I think to change now uh, would uh, confuse people even more, that sometimes they get asked for their advice and sometimes they don't get asked for their advice. To talk to um, Cynthia's question, I think that there are some people who will vote yes uh, to support it, um, but they are concerned that if for some reason the vote fails, they want their voice to be heard that if, the, if it did have to go to a second round, they would want it to be higher or lower. So, so that's why I have it worded this way. And I would hesitate to sort of change, I would hesitate to send a ballot, uh, a second ballot, out to uh, the citizens basically saying, well, we wanted your advice the first time, but now we don't want your advice. You know, I, I think, you know, it may well come back again, you know, two people will say too low. I don't know what they'll say. You know, I hesitate to make predictions. But I would like to have that information if, heaven forbid, we should have to have a third round. David. Um, the council you may remember that when we addressed this the first time, um, I raised exactly the same concern that Councillor Dill uh, just raised. And it was our council chair who, in response, persuaded me, no, it was a good thing to have on there anyway, because otherwise you might be disenfranchising some people who want to vote yes, who want to vote either too high or too low, um, who might be persuaded in order to vote too high or too low will vote no on the first question. Because if they vote yes on the first question, they're not allowed to say whether they think it's too high or too low, and therefore they'll, they'll be sort of drawn to no just so they can say, I think it's too much, even though they might otherwise be inclined to support it. So, and I sort of bought that argument at the time. And I was wrong. <laughs> and I still think it's the right thing to do, to have it on there, recognizing that it's a little superfluous to have somebody vote yes on the primary question and still go on to say 
too high or too low, but I don't think there's any substantial harm in having it there. Um, and I'd like to see it uh, remain. I will oppose it. I um, did. I was willing to go with this experiment last time, but I've had a few people tell me they voted yes and didn't go to the next question. They didn't think they could. I had people who told me they voted no so that they could go to the next question. And I think lastly, a couple of people who told me they felt like they could just protest and engage in something that was less than real. So. I will oppose the advisory question. I think it's abundantly clear from the campaign that was waged very successfully what the issue was, 6% or 4 And in retrospect, I'm sorry that we had the advisory question because um, I think it was confusing. I think we ought to treat this like all our elections. Yes, no. Um, so no further discussion. Jim, I'm sorry. Hard to say I will support the motion. Okay. So all in favor of the advisory question on the ballot? One, two, three, four, five. And opposed? And show that to be Sarah and me opposed. Thank you. you summarize I, what the... Okay. I'm just trying to make sure we have worked through all of the questions we need to address on item 93. And I believe that we have. We've set a public hearing for a school budget increase of 6%, the public hearing to be held on July 14th. That would be at 7.30 at our regular council meeting. And then we would um, have agreed to have a public validation vote that is a public referendum on July 22nd. And the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I just ask if the staff can clarify at this point when absentee ballots would be available? Would it be the morning of the 15th? We, we, we'll research that question and let folks know. The, 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 the good thing is, by what you've done today, we can proceed with getting the ballots printed with, with, the, with the ballot question, do you favor approving the school budget for the upcoming school year that was adopted the latest, and with the advisory, knowing you'll vote July 14th, it doesn't stay in the amount, we assume you'll 6%, but the ballot doesn't. We'll prepare the warrant and all of that for the July 14th meeting, and absentees will be available likely on the morning of the 15th. The day of the week is, yeah, that's a Tuesday morning. Okay. But can folks begin to apply for absentees before yes. then? Yes. Okay. Now, um, we are going to item 94, the fitness center lease. And are you not proposing to do this in executive session, Michael? It is you, a... You can do it if you choose to do it because it involves negotiations involving property. Anne? Um, I, I, but only if disclosure would prejudice, the, the right to know law says only if public discussion would somehow harm your bargaining position. And frankly, I don't see where that qualifier fits in this instance. Okay. I per personally thought we should go into executive session. It is a lease. Um, but um, if that's not Anne? <laughs> um, I would move that we enter executive session to discuss two matters. I don't know the MRSA numbers for discussing uh, property and leases. It's 405-6-something else. We'll put the letter. 405-something. Yeah. And also, secondly, to um, discuss, negotiate, collect the status of collective bargaining, and that would be under 1 MRSA section 4056D. Okay. Um, is there a second? second? All in favor? Now, before we officially go into executive session, um, we, we probably will come out and take a vote in public, but since there are people here who may wish to speak to other items, um, I would say now is the time, unless you want to wait till we come out of executive session. You mean citizens' discussion? Citizens. Citizens', citizens discussion, discussion. On items not on the agenda? Well, it's on items not on the agenda, yeah. but I'll Which, allow. Just, that, that's fine. Just, I, it's not printed on the printed agenda because this is a special meeting versus the regular meeting. The regular meeting has that order of business. Okay, special well then maybe we should shouldn't. Not. I know councillors also to have to go to work, too. So. 
three minutes. It's obvious how the vote has come out, but just to give you, and it's not legal advice, I'm not allowed to give it. 10 plus 14 is 24, not 22. So even if you don't count intermediate days, legally it can't be on the 22nd. It has to be on the 24th. And if you follow the procedure you did last time, which is not to count 10 plus 14 to 24. Excuse me, David, we're meeting on the 14th. It's within 14 the days. It's, it's not 14 days, David. It's, it's I, within 14. It's, ten, it's under the old law. You have to have 10 days. You interpreted it last time as being 10 business days. Even if it's not the new law. New law is not into the 18th. The vote takes, when the vote takes place, it's the, the law in effect at that time. I'm just trying to help. Okay, David, I appreciate it. You're a good lawyer, I guess. I know that. You're a good lawyer. We used to work together. And so we'll take that under advisement. Can he just finish? I'm actually interested in what he's saying. I'm just saying that you voted. It's clear. I'm trying to help you. If you're going to have your vote on the 14th, and it's under the old law, which it is, it has to be 10 days. Last time you interpreted that, based on the MMA or whatever you did, as not including uh, weekends and holidays. That makes it, by my count, the 28th. So I'd like to have the vote done and done legally. So I suggest that if you have it on the 14th, it's going to have to be on the 28th. No, it's within 10 days, David. It's not 10 days. So earlier you were voting to give people all kinds of... We'll double check. But I believe it's within. Okay. I believe it well, says. Double check. I pre. I do appreciate. Just so you know, when you double check, it says on the tenth day. Okay. Honor. Appreciate that. Cynthia's already looked. Honor before. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we are in executive session. We will come back and meet in public. Um, Sue. I yes. I would encourage you to join us, Sue on the um, fitness center lease and um, part of the packet to the public or no? No, no, no. We will do that in the Jordan conference room.